Not far from the lights, the sounds, and the gambling of Las Vegas, Nevada, just a mere drive from the city center, lies a vast and beautiful desert. It's home to scorpions and snakes, deer, sheep, and mountain lions, and also stand-up comedians. Okay, so um, Les is up at the car. I'm going to tell you something. I'm a little nervous about this. It's windy. It's cold. I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this. I don't, I don't think he thinks I'm going to, but I'm going to make it. <laughs> This is the deal. Just way down there, and uh, doesn't really know what I have in store for him. I mean, I'm not going to kill the guy, but I ain't going to make it easy either. I got to go Survivor Man style. I got to film myself. That wasn't in the contract. But he's getting all geared up. I'm getting. I'm geared up, ready to go. It's a little windy, a little chilly, which doesn't speak highly of tonight. But we're here. Me and the survivor, me and the survivor man, taking on the deserts of Nevada. <laughs> what have I done? That's Bill. You know, Bill, they put people away who talk to themselves. Here he comes. This is like when the, the you know, back in school. When your teacher would get sick and you thought you had a day off and then the substitute showed up, <laughs> guess what? My substitute just arrived. Yeah, and you know what? Class is in. <laughs> Here we go. And by the way, just so you know, I'm doing this Survivor Man style. I'm carrying my own camera. It really wasn't in the contract, but... But you didn't read the fine print. Apparently I didn't. Hang on, now let's see. Let's make sure you got this working right. Should I check or, I mean, you are a man of media, but let's see. Okay, let's see. Just make it's sure recording. Check it out. See there? I can see your voice. I can see you. This is the Bill, Bill, <laughs> Bill and Les's great adventure. Here we go. Oh, my friend. Good luck. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do all this. All right, all right, let's go. Now Les, do you leave yours running pretty much all the time? Oh, stop walking? with the questions already. And how much, how far do we got to walk? And are my feet hurt? I'm thirsty. So let's take a look at what you've got. Okay. I want to see what supplies you brought, and then tell me why you brought them. All right, I brought stuff along the think thinking lines. So, obviously, knife. Okay. Paracord. Headlamp. Okay. Flashlight. I brought this. Yeah. Because I want to know, see if maybe we can start a fire that way. And I brought... Two power bars? Two power bars. Okay. And that's it. That's it? Bag's empty? Bag's empty. Just the bottles of water? Yep. Bag's empty. Okay. First of all, with this group of items. Right. Tell me what you think would be the two, if you could only have two, what would be the two most important items you would have? If I said pick two, we got to go, what would they be? Matches. And a flashlight. You have chosen wisely, my son. Really? You have chosen very wisely. I would tell you that if I had to make this choice, I would pick the same two items. Yes. Exactly the same two yes. items. And I'll tell you why. First of all, uh, first of all, when it comes to the flashlights, but here's what we're going to do. See, unfortunately for you, you've just made your choice. Damn it. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to leave you with all three flashlights. Let me tell you why. Okay. We don't want a life and death situation in the middle of the night and for no. want of a flashlight. Right. I would never take your flashlight away from you, not, not in this situation. Got to have a light at night. Anything from you walk by and poke your, uh, your, uh, your eye on a stick on a tree, right. and a branch right. in a tree, we got to have a flashlight at night. That's, that's very important, so okay. do that. The matches, are absolutely, uh, I agree with you, vital, but, but you made a mistake, Bill. What? 
you told me you really, really wanted to try it with this, so what you're going to have is only this. You know, a long time ago, my granddad told me, sometimes it's better just to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> he was the right granddad. <laughs> now, okay, all right, I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in for a pound there. Now, what we'll do is I'm going to be a nice guy just the same. Okay. And we're going to go with the two power bars. Now, that might look like to some, somebody watching, like, oh, you got power bars, man, you're fine. You try that all day. That's all right. you got, and you're hiking these hills. And the reason why I want you to take these is because of blood sugar level. Right. I, I, I don't want you to be a liability to me. I don't want to be like, Bill's like feeling fainty. He's a, so this is really important. Okay. So to me, this is important. So we're going to do that. But we're going to do everything else without the aid of cutting implements. Okay. Okay. Um, for the most part, uh, and since your striker has a striker on it, uh, let's see what it's like without a knife. And I'll tell you one thing, I kind of agree. Knives are great. I mean, I've, you know, I've got knives and stuff, but yeah, you know, in the end, it's those matches, you know, yeah, that really matter I want the fire. most. So these things here, I'm taking away from you. Okay. But I'm giving you this old army wool blanket. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you by taking those away, but by giving you this army wool blanket. Okay. Now, do you want me to show you what my wife gave me? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> this was my wife's idea because she knows about me sleeping. And I said, well, at least I have my backpack I can kind of use as a pillow. Yeah. She goes, well, what if you did this? And she gave me a, a baggie. Making an air pillow. And she goes. <laughs> Normally I would have said, you gotta leave that behind, but I, you know, I, don't, I, I do not want to invoke the wrath of Gail. <laughs> that pillow's coming. I That's got a good idea. I got news for you though. This will work for about an hour. There you go. And then the air is going to slowly seep out of it. But do you know what you can do with that? No, what? You can collect water. You can carry fire starting uh, items. See you there, honey? You can do a lot with it. Actually, a Ziploc bag is on my list of uh, must-have survival kit items. All right. So All right. Now, I've got a present for you. This I've actually emptied. It normally comes fully stocked with a massive amount of survival supplies, but then that's going to be almost like cheating, to be honest with you. So I'm going to give you this guy to carry with you as well. Uh, I'm hoping it's a coffee pot. <laughs> well, it is a coffee pot. It's this, <laughs> without the coffee. That's it, man. We are, with that, uh, let's go up, let's get our camera gear, and let's get... Surviving. Let's get surviving, exactly. Wait, i got to do this. Cha -cha -cha -cha. Yeah. Oh, camera break, commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> The first task is simply to walk Bill a while, get him to separate his thoughts, his body, his reality from the fun and games of Las Vegas, and into a mindset of survival. Even the crew who are getting these final aerial shots will now let us walk away on our own. It may look hot now, but this time of year there's still snow on the high tops and the nights can get brutally cold. All jokes aside, survival out here with a strong wind cutting across the open desert lands is always as real as it gets. Okay, so we were talking about the wind. Yeah. And it's killer, it's deadly. What you were saying that you wanted to talk about like take where the land takes us and then try to find a place that's I'm sheltered. Gonna, yeah, I'm gonna lead us in for ways here. And then when I'm ready, you're gonna take over and you're gonna lead us where we walk. We've got a bit of a, a dirt road trail that we can follow for a, a while. Right. But then I wanna take us off the road and uh, set you up for being the leader. You gotta make the decisions. Really? Okay. Uh, what are the dangers here? Well, danger number one is dehydration. Right. That is our biggest enemy here. I was gonna ask you, do you have, for lack of a better term, an equation? Like we've got two bottles of water. Do you, how do you, in your head, parse it out so that you know you've got water for the whole? It's a tough one. Um, do you and take like a swig just to keep your mouth wet? Sometimes, yes. It depends on where you are, of course. The desert is going to play a whole different game on you, right? And if it was 100 degrees, that'd be a different oh, story than it is now. We'd be in big trouble. Yeah. Um, you know, whereas if I'm, say, in northern Ontario, Canada, 
by a lake, uh, I'm going to guzzle. Uh, in fact, here's a trick I would do with water. If I'm by a lake and I can drink it, no food, I would guzzle as much as I could every half an hour, religiously. And the result would be I wouldn't feel hungry. Because your stomach's always My bloated. stomach's bloated and I don't feel hungry. Right. I still get a little weak and stuff like that, but I don't feel hungry. And that's, it's a nice little trick, you know, in a survival situation. But here, I don't really have a plan for us tonight, Bill. I think we've got a couple of bottles of water. This is, you know, as they say, this is Vegas air, right? This is as dry as dry gets. Right. So, just gonna kinda drink when I need to and hope for the best. Might sound a little casual, but no, that's okay. kinda what I'm gonna do. Now, the uh, next danger, I will say, is cougar. I do know that there are three very large female mountain lions living right in this valley where we are. How did you know that? I researched. Oh. I checked this area out, and that's what I discovered. There's 3,000 deer, uh, almost 1,000 sheep, I think, and three big female mountain lions. So, matters mostly when we, if we go off alone. Right. But here's the, here's the redeeming part. They do not like to attack anything that's over 90 pounds. So, yeah. we're fine. I've been face to face with a mountain lion. And uh, I just gave it a yell and it took off. Now, would you ever consider camping in an area like this? Like, see this little concave rock thing? I like this. It's got this. It's, no, it's great. It's a, it's a good spot. Uh, I mean, we're going to be walking farther, but it is a good spot. But that's actually what you just did is a really good idea. Take stock as you go. Right. Let's say we walk uh, for even a mile, and there's nothing, and we see nothing, and we come up, and at, at, at a mile, it actually gets dangerous. We might actually want to say, you know what, you remember that rock face back there? Right. We've got time. Let's go back to it. And that might be a very important decision to make. Bill is anxious to get shelter building, but I've got to keep him moving, break him down just a little to leave the outside world behind. But creating a mental picture you can go back to of everything you see along the trail is a fantastic start to ensuring survival. But the danger of the situation turning ugly is always only one wrong step away. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mountain lion scat. That is indeed mountain lion scat. It's old. Very old, but. There rabbit you go. There's rabbit fur in it. Look at your human tooth. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. We got mountain lion, that's for sure. This, my friend, for example, as far as what you can eat or ingest, this is Mormon tea. And uh, they would actually, it actually gives you a little bit of a, a boost, like a caffeine boost, right. but it's very gentle. It, 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 it fall, you don't get a caffeine you know, crash yeah. afterwards. Um, so you just break some of this up, boil it Break in some water? of this, boil it in water. Uh, you've got a tin. So uh, you know, one thing we could start right now is me telling you this. Grab it when you can. Always grab it when you can. Man. Okay. I've been in, like, say, Ontario, land of the silver birch kind of thing. Right. Oh, no, we'll get some birch when we get to camp, and we'll use that for fire starter. You get there, and you're in a popular forest, and there's no birch. You know, so it's always in survival. It's always grab. You don't know what you, what's up around the corner. It could be nothing. So if you want to try some of this tonight, uh, break it off, shove it in your pockets, and we'll be good to go. Bill comes with his own set of wilderness skills. He's an avid hunter and is no stranger to the out of doors. So it's time to let him take control and see if he can make the right decisions when it comes to survival. There's no deer stand to hang out in here. So we probably need to go ahead and find a place that we're gonna call home for the night, and get a fire going. Well, let me tell you what the deal's gonna be, how we'll work this forward from here, okay? okay? So 
you know, behind us is, is the, the crevice that we came out of and come up on the trail on the road here. So you see the road built? From here on in, what I want to do about the road yeah. is it doesn't exist for us. Okay. Let's get off the road. What the road will represent to us, let's just pretend it's a river we can't cross. Okay. And that way you can use it as a marker, but we're not going to walk on it because that's just easy walking. So we want to walk through the desert. Right. So that's number one. Number two is, well, how can I put this? I'm going to shut my mouth, and you're in charge now. I want you to decide where we walk, how we walk, the pace that we walk at, what you want to stop and gather or not gather, and when you think we should stop and make camp. So from here, my friend, your leader. Let's do it, Bill. Here we go. You are in charge. Don't screw up. I'll tell you what I'm worried about most tonight. I've, we've already said it. It's this wind. Yeah. We're really going to have to think about it. Hey, Billy, you talking Tinder? Yeah. Grass is the best. There's no question about it. Right. But look at this stuff here. Now, yeah, we passed a bunch of that stuff there. Right. Oh, yeah. All right, now, I'm going to be honest. I think I've tried that before, and I think it worked well. I can't remember. But well, it doesn't have to grab some of No, and what I do, this is why big pockets are great in a survival situation. I just start shoving in, so. Yeah. Okay. So that's a start. Big thing about Tinder, my friend, I find is variety. Not just one type of uh, fibrous material, but three or four. The local military have somehow figured out we're in the area. It's checking us out. Let me ask you, you Bill, know, what your parameters are. What your parameters are for what determining what kind of shelter we're looking for? What are the things you're looking for? Well, number one is a break from the wind. Right. Something, I don't know that we're going to be able to get out of the wind completely, but if we can cut it in half, or even more, that'd be optimal. Agreed. For two reasons. One, for temperature-wise, and two, for keeping a fire going. Because even though we're going to have a fire, I'm also very conscious about the land, and I don't want to set it on fire right. by having a big gust of Absolutely. wind. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. Um, those are the two priorities for me, is wind and uh, breakage of the wind, number one, and a place I can have a, a fire that we can keep going. OK. Any other parameters you're putting in well, place? Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at, I don't want to camp on a place that looks like it has loose rocks above you. Um, and also a place that's big enough for two of us. You know, there's, we've, I've seen several places that were good if you were just by yourself. Interesting, yeah. But there's going to be two of us. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, the, the other one that's going to be key and vital, a boatload of firewood. Yeah. You don't want to be struggling for firewood. So you want, when you finally find a spot you think's got, you know, and that's, that's how you end up compromising because, well, there's, this place is great, but there's zero firewood. This place is eh, okay, but tons of firewood. And so you have to do your decision right. on which one you're going to go with. There was a place back there that was sheltered. I saw it. You were looking up in the yeah, rocks there? a bunch of dead trees, but I didn't, I didn't get up in it to see exactly what my wor was. My worry there was it was really uneven ground. Yeah, and it's like, it is. Where, where's, where's Bill going to lie? Where am I going right. to lie? Because that's actually, you got to make a bed in a way, and that's yeah. part of the process. Okay. All right, let's continue. Wind, loose rock, room for two, firewood. It sounds like the same considerations you might make for a camping spot. Yet that's a survival truth. You really should be trying to make yourself as comfortable as possible. If you can't get sleep, survival will quickly become a horrible ordeal. Okay, so I'm looking at this little area here. It's surrounded by trees, which would be a good windbreak. Looks like it's got good soft soil, so it's not too uncomfortable to sleep in. And there appears to be some firewood around. Lots of firewood, that's for sure. I mean, just right behind us is yeah. A ton of firewood. We're still going to get the wind, though. It's not, it's not as good as a rock yeah. blocking you. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a little more strolling. See if yeah. you're right. A rock block would be great. 
That's right. He said rock block, not the other thing. <laughs> I was just going to say, as opposed to. Yeah. <laughs> I think a way we can work in tandem here is you keep your eyes peeled, look for this spot. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping my eyes also over on the road boundary. As I said, we're going to just okay. treat it like it's a river we can't cross. Right. And that way, you know, just keep us from getting lost, basically. Right. Oh, man. I'm kind of digging this one less. We're in between these two rock areas, firewood. This is wind-like. You're right, it's, uh, the rocks are in the right direction to help block. The wind is kind of swirly. It is, yeah. But I can deal with that, because swirly winds aren't near as strong as straight line. No. The thing about our fire spot is the more rock around it, the more reflective heat we get. Yeah. The other thing we could do is take some of these pine boughs and lay them down on the rocks. Oh, that's going to be key. Yeah. We want to get up off them that way. And there's plenty of pine boughs here, so. Yeah. I think, I think now we're at two and a half hours before it hits the hill. Okay. Of course, when it hits the hill, it's going to be cold quickly. Yeah. So, um, what's your choice? What's your, your decision and your thoughts? I gotta be honest, I think this is the best we've found. And like I said, I don't wanna take too much time looking because my guess is the fire's not gonna start immediately. We still gotta get some wood. There's wood around here, but uh, I just, you know, my thing, I like it just because we're not, we're out of that just wind. That full on wind, yeah. I agree with you. I, th I think, you know what, my, my, my thought is one of the biggest mistakes that people make, they just wait too long. Yeah. If we're going to build a fire, we need to gather firewood. That's work. Yeah. If we're going to take boughs off a tree and make a, a bed to sit on, that's work. And we're going to get tired doing that. So that all takes time. We've got two and a half hours before that sun drops. Right. We could eat up that two and a half hours pretty darn quickly. Oh, I agree. So I'm down. I'm all down right. with here. We found our camping spot. It's often a crapshoot in a survival situation. When time starts getting short, decisions have to be made quickly. And yet, there might have been a cabin five minutes further down the trail. Bill's on the right path in terms of his survival thinking. Assess the situation fully and determine your next move before you run out of time. But how will he fare as his energy reserves start to dissipate in the desert wind? You know, green limbs are awfully hard to break off. Well, part of the advantage of surviving with more than just one is teamwork. So here's what I'll do. Careful now. I know you're a good man with a knife, but I don't want to be the one that lends you a knife. Thank you. So there you go. I'll lend you my knife. That's one of the things, right? I mean, not everybody has all the tools and stuff, and so you've got to d divide duties. Cutting limbs for a mattress. The energy you expend in a survival situation has to be on the right activities. Waste your energy on frivolous ideas, and all you do is burn down your strength and burn down the clock. And then you have real trouble. This is why Survival S2 is a lot better than surviving out here alone. Just the same, the sun is setting fast. All right, so we are, I'm just saying to Bill, we're looking pretty here. We've got a lot of firewood, but I'm gonna get a lot more. Bill's been getting all the boughs. We've got a little hole tucked down in there for our fire. And of course, it's got a natural re reflective wall of all that rock. It's not gonna be comfortable on our back, so that's gonna be something we have the luxury right now of fixing, actually. Bottom line, Bill, is uh, here's the rule of thumb. We can't have too many boughs and we can't have too much firewood. Okay. So yeah, uh, but working together like this, it makes such a huge difference. I mean, what we've just done in, in 40 minutes, it was, you know, it would be an hour and 15 or an hour and 20 for me, so. So this is good. We're starting to get settled in here. There's all our firewood. And 
I'll give him kudos on the location too. I gotta, I gotta say we're we're in this uh, nook and cranny here. You can see behind me it's a wash, and uh, goes down. But the wind is blowing this way, so we're caught in a nice little crux here, and I think that's going to serve us well. The odd wind is still swirling up in here every once in a while, but I think, uh, yeah, I think it's going to really serve us well to uh, have climbed up into this this little downwash area. You can see them behind me. Tons of firewood. Firewood that's easily broken. Some of it you got to climb for, but uh, so far so good. I'll have to see how Bill does getting the fire going now, because that's all on him. Yeah, so what I'm doing is coming up here and grabbing some big pieces, and I can just walk right over to the ledge, throw the wood down, nice and easy. There, throw this over the cliff. So we, uh, we got the wood pile growing. Gonna get some more boughs. And there's our little home away from home for the night. Well, Bill is, uh, I mean, he's an outdoorsman. That's plain to see. And that, that helps huge. Yeah. Anyone who's familiar with even something as basic as a campfire. Uh, but that doesn't actually take away the, uh, the intensity of, of, say, my nervousness about having someone out here. You know, I've still got to get them back safely. That sun is beautiful, but I can feel it getting weak. So, well, Bill continues down there, more and more boughs. I think we're okay now for firewood, so I can take a break, work on our camp, and then it's all about getting the fire going. You know, we, uh, <laughs> we're not far from, uh, I guess, I think they did atomic testing. <laughs> really close to here. And so we're not far from a military area. I don't know if it's a base or what it is, but Chopper came out, circled us a couple of times, checking us out. We're way out here. And you just got to wonder, how do they even know we're here? Because they came right to us. But I think it's going to have something to do with the fact that... Uh, Antonio, who's not with us, he's off now in a nice safe location, I'm sure, eating food, and I'm sure, and being nice and warm, I'm sure, and playing with uh, aerial camera. And uh, I think they get a signal. Now, we're, we're legal. We're, where we are is completely legal, so it's not a problem. But we're close enough that they get, they get the notice. I think that's why they came out. But they came right to us and found us. They haven't come back, so as long as they do don't do any target practice on us tonight, we're all right. Have a seat. This was, uh, I was starting to feel kind of selfish up here. I'm like, oh, Bill's got to see this. Have a seat and take a look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. And, and in a silly way, this actually accomplishes two two things, first of all, the beauty of it, but also now you know what is all around you. Right. You've got a mind's eye of what's around you at this point, and that's really important. Boy, I tell you what, this is just incredible. I'm trying to block the sun so you get a kind of a view of what, what we have. So anyway, We've uh, found our little place for the night. We've been collecting pine boughs and firewood. Les is like the king of getting firewood. <laughs> Not my first rodeo. I want us to be warm. Yeah, I think we're going to have a nice night. Even the wind's blowing a little bit. We're down in a little rock crevice, so it's kind of blocked. I got to tell you something, gang. It's harder than it looks on TV. The uh, the filming and trying to get everything ready uh, and our car is gone he's somewhere over there in the mountains and there's no way to get hold of him so we're we're here but uh it is just spectacularly beautiful i mean you you come off the desert and we're in these 
hills and trees are everywhere. Uh, it's just, it really makes you feel special in the world. We're in a very special place. comfortable than I thought it was going to be. Nice job. Here we go. All right, Billy. It's all on you, my friend. No pressure, though. No. Okay, so uh, we've done our due diligence. We've gotten our firewood. We got our beds made. Now we're going to attempt to start a fire with this little sparker. Here we go. So we got the great building vol with just a spark, just some cattail fluff, and a little bit of grass. And uh, this should work. You have fire? Oh my god, I did it. I made fire with a sparker. I think the man's got it. <laughs> yeah! Sweet mother of pearl. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> now, now, the magic here is that you saved using a match. Yeah. Right? One spark, a little bit of cattail fluff, and some grass, and you've got a fire. So in a, in a survival situation, you're not using up a match. Oh my, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> yeah, baby! We're, we're cooking with gas now. This is good. I think uh, this means we're going to want to set ourselves up to get some of uh, the last of our water boiling, make some Mormon tea. I think that sounds like a righteous idea. Every survival success, no matter how small, like finding some wild edibles or getting a fire going, serves to build confidence in the lost victim and can bolster you up so that you're ready to take on the next challenge. Well, okay, it's been a really interesting day. Interesting and fun. I made a fire with a spark. And that was really cool, because I've never done that before. Uh, it's just, I mean, I know I'm supposed to be funny, but this is just magical. Uh, right now, I don't know, 3 o'clock in the morning, we maybe have a different bill showing up on you. But uh, the wind's died down a little bit, thank God. And now we're just kind of sitting by the fire and waiting for the evening to come on. You can tell it's kind of gotten a little different colors around but man this is this is really something everybody ought to do once in their life uh it's just it makes you really appreciate what uh, we've been given here there's a couple of things you can't get in a survival situation often in, in the wilderness and that is a steaming hot drink and an ice cold drink oh yeah i bet and when you're in the hot and you get to, you, you never, you're not going to have ice or anything like that, right? So, And the, what I find about the hot drinks in a situation like this is it just makes you feel human again. Like, oh, yeah, comfort. You, know, you just feel like human, like a human. Oh, man. It's time for the next Bill Engvall challenge. Thank you. So, just like we did getting out here, I mean, you chose this location, chose to keep walking. Great spot, has a lot going for it, and here we are. I'm gonna do the same thing now from here until morning. Here's the deal. Uh, it can get pretty miserable. If it starts getting real miserable, the choice I want you to make, and this choice is based on like, I'm not basing it on how do I make this easy for Bill Engvall. Right. I'm basing it on in a 24-hour in a survival situation, we've stopped to stay here, but we know we can walk out. Mm -hmm. right? We know that. So the choice I'm going to give you that you're going to have all throughout the entire night is should we get up and walk out you know, in the dark? 
And we're gonna wait till it's dark for sure, but should we get up and walk out in the dark? And then why, why would you have that choice? Because you might find that this fire's not doing it. It got, it got so cold that you'd rather be walking, build up some heat, and walk out through the middle of the night, which is also another experience altogether. When traveling in the, in the dark is something else. You know, it's, it's a whole other ambiance. So what we would do in this case is we would go down to, to the road, so we'd stay on the road, and we'd, we'd hike out the road in the dark. So the choice will be yours to make. Both of them are challenging. Hiking out in the dark and sticking it out in the cold. Right. It'll be your call. Okay. All right? I won't ask you. I won't bug you. I'll let you decide. Of course, if you wake up and I'm not here. You made a decision. I made a decision on my own accord. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll warm up the vehicle for you, though. And then you'll hear this over echo through the mountains. Bless you, mother... This is the deal. I mean, this is be a bit of what I expected. Of course, I'm, you know, you, you come out in a situation like this, doing what I do, exposing someone new to it, and uh, I know one thing for sure that, that will always happen. They will be come entranced by nature. They'll become entranced by nature, and. Uh, uh, you know, Billing already had that love of nature, but you get out here and all of the pretense of being a world famous stand up comedian and being funny, and probably the pressure of having to be funny all the time, is washed away because, you know, you're here. And it's stunning and it's beautiful. And, uh, and he gets it now. And he's done well but it hasn't got cold yet, and it's about to. In fact, I can feel the chill just standing here at this point. So we'll see how things go from here on in. But what I'm happy about is Bill is enjoying nature. And he doesn't have to be funny. He can just be Bill. There is one other important component of tonight, too, that I've got to ask you. When it gets really cold in the middle of the night, do you prefer to be the spoon or the fork? <laughs> I like being, honestly, I don't mind being the spoon, but I'm happy to be the fork, too. Keep the cold away. Jokes aside, sleeping back to back or even spooning has kept many a survival victim warm through the night. But then there's always the hot rock trick. I don't know why I didn't think of this one sooner, but the other old trick is to take a whole bunch of rocks like this, let them get nice and hot, not like so that you can at least touch them and stuff. Right. And they work like nice little hot water bottles. Well, yeah, you'll put it in, and I know it's a rock, but you'll put it in by your thigh or something, and it'll feel great. So try to get them to that point where they're almost too hot. And that's a good stage. Well, good morning. It is about six o'clock in the morning. I made it. I did it. I know a lot of you out there going, oh, 24 hours is not that tough. Let me tell you something. We, I found, and Les made me do all this. I found our campsite. I've made our beds with pine boughs. He gathered pie, firewood that, by the way, I don't know if you can see is all gone. I mean, all gone, and that was a big pile. Still a little fire going there. The night was long, oh my God. I don't think anybody has any appreciation, because it gets dark like at six, and then it's just now coming up. Les and I ran out of conversation about nine, and then uh, took turns snoring at each other. 
The good news is we didn't have to spoon. That's a big bonus. But anyway, just want to let you guys know I made it. I was a little disappointed about that. <laughs> yeah, okay, now he wakes up. Now he wants to chat. Uh, I don't know if even Les knows this, but last night about 1 o'clock we had a little creature in the camp. Uh, no, but nothing big. But I would like to thank Les for my restless night's sleep for, was it seven times you brought up the mountain lions yesterday? So we're going to get ready and hike out of here and go get into a, I was so going to get a shower and I'm going to have a soft bed waiting at my hotel and I am ready. <laughs> you are the man. We, we now love you. We're literally just coming down now and thinking like, oh man, we got to buy it. Like I said, I, I actually told him we had seven miles. I didn't tell him it was 10. It was actually 10 miles where he was away from us. All right. Uh, you know. All right, it's your last challenge. Besides, our backs are screwed up anyway. Yeah. Well, I did it, buddy. You guys are up dude. That was honestly, I was worried. I searched late last night. Like I did a safety check about 10 o'clock. Did you come this far? I came. I went down. You see what I mean? Six miles. We, we, and I was whistling, driving like two miles per hour. See, we never even heard hours. you. We never even heard the car go by. Where were you? We were up. about 50 yards up in there. Yeah. Wow. You know, did, did you have a fire? Yeah. Oh, we had a fire. Up there, there's a huge rock, and I was driving really snow, sniffing the air and whistling, and I got a whiff of fire. I was like, they got to be around here somewhere. So <laughs> I even slower, and I was like, going to start honking. I wasn't sure, you know, if you guys were going to be. Uh, I almost wanted you to honk because uh, I woke up this morning, and I thought, I remember I, I, I he said, said, he said, I didn't, think, I didn't I hear him last night. We didn't hear him either. Oh, man, he didn't go by. Then I started thinking about the helicopter that went overhead. I thought, and though I'm not telling you this, I'm like, dear Lord, please tell me he didn't get busted. Please tell me they didn't come <laughs> yeah. in and take him away. Yeah. And, and they're like, we don't care about your friends who are camping. You're coming with us, sir. And we're going to walk 10 miles, go to the uh, camp, your campground where you are, and be like, oh, and I'm going to be like, oh, dear Lord. Oh, no. I got to get Bill Engvall oh, back to the highway. Yeah, and now yeah, we got to go back right. 14 miles to get to the highway. <laughs> All right, well, the, yeah, congratulations, sir. Made it. it was awesome. <laughs> Let's get this, was, this was about the coolest thing. Was it? I was, the night was long, yeah. but uh, you really got a perspective about how small you are on this planet. Right. You know what's great? We didn't have to walk two steps on this road on oh, the journey out. We left the river. We couldn't Let's cross go. the river. Let's go. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, what I did was I told him, I said, just pretend the road is a river and we can see it, but we can't cross it. All right, let's go. Yeah. Bill and I are going back to Vegas, where they have beds and sheets and pillows. He's got a job to do, and I've got food to eat. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs>